Guys, today is has been a really eventful day so far. It's, I think, three o'clock in the afternoon. Yep, three o'clock in the afternoon, and we are having, my son's in the chicken coop looking for eggs or harassing chickens or something, but uh, we're having my daughter's sweet 16 birthday party this Saturday, and my wife convinced me that I needed to get some help to get the yard and the pond and the field and the Christmas trees cleaned up and mowed around and all of that stuff. So Howard and Larry have been here, and you'll remember Larry from the shed project, and Howard is actually still here on the mower. I think he's finishing up right now, but they've been working. We had a water line bust in the yard and drain our well. Uh, and in the middle of all of that, uh, we had some electrical issues with the well that my uncle had to come and take care of. So yeah, it's been quite a day. I did get the pipe fixed and uh, the well has water in it again. So we're, we're all good there. But yeah, quite an eventful day. Tomorrow we're getting new pigs. So we need to set up a spot for them. I've decided to put the new pig. That's a noisy chicken. I have decided to put the new pigs temporarily right here next to the chicken coop mostly because I have electrical access in the chicken coop and I'll be able to wire up a, a hot box in there for an electric fence wire there so what we have here is some of the netting we'll do the normal outside netting and the inside single strand of electric and we're gonna put them right out here for their first first little while at the place here so let's get started are you having trouble getting the eggs I'm having trouble getting her eggs. why what's wrong is it a boy or a girl? That's definitely a girl chicken. Mm. All right, now you can get the eggs. Now I can get her eggs. She has two eggs. She does. She did good. I don't think she laid both of those, though. This is some of that electric netting that our friends at Vivor sent us. And this stuff has proven uh, to work extremely well as kind of an outer barrier. It is an electrified net, but I don't electrify it. I do a single strand on the inside so that the pigs know that they can't go past that. And this is kind of a visual barrier right here. This is some pretty good stuff so far. But how are you to set up the fence? I really don't know, buddy. Those are the rock finders. There we go. I know there's got to be some kind of a method to these fences, but I haven't figured it out yet. This thing is so tangled up and it didn't come out of the box like that. I really blew it on estimating where this fence would end. There's one and a half links of this stuff past where it should be. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. There. Can you do that one? So I'll push it and push it on up in there. Yeah, there you go. We still got to put braces on the corners and that'll make this, this fence stand up a little better. Good job. Uh oh, hey, you can't turn like that, can you? All right, grab the stick. I think y'all pretty well get the picture. It's the simple setup that I use on the other pig pen, the net on the outside, the electric wire on the inside. Except this time I decided to go with two electric wires on the inside there. And that's just to make sure I get the right height on these pigs. I don't know how, how uh, tall they're gonna be. They're eight weeks old. The wire goes in to the chicken coop here and goes into a box in there. And it's grounded to the fence itself here. Yeah, it's kind of a rickety setup, but I believe it'll work on 
a temporary basis. This is probably gonna be pretty interesting because these pigs, to my knowledge, are not trained on electric yet. So uh, we're gonna have to get them trained on electric. Another thing that has to be done <clears throat> before the party tomorrow is we've gotta get all of these boards out of the floor. I've got lots and lots of boards that are destined for the ceiling, sitting in the floor, stickered, acclimating to the house. And the best, things, the best thing is gonna be just to stick them on the ceiling. So let's do it. It is currently 9.47 in the morning i have to leave here at two o'clock this afternoon to go get pigs i have 28 of these boards to process and put up can i do it in four hours let's find out and I have not put the first board up. I put some dead wood up, but not a board. And it ended up being, I think, 27 boards. One of them was not usable. Uh, not looking good getting this done before two o'clock, but that's okay. Um, at this point, we're ready to make our first cut on these boards. And then I can start putting the ceiling boards up and I'll just get as many done as I can. Well, that wraps up this side of the room and that's more than half, so that's pretty good progress. Right now it is right at two o'clock. The guy that I'm getting the pigs from texted me and he's actually not gonna be available until, oh no, it's raining and my tools are out here. This is not good. Well guys, virtually none of the plans that I had for this video have worked out so good. The rain that you just saw in the last clip turned into several periods of basically flash flooding around here. And uh, that wrecked my plans for the ceiling. Uh, the gentleman with the pigs had to delay even farther because he had some issues with some of his equipment with his job. And now uh, it's gonna be tomorrow. So that was yesterday. This is obviously today and tomorrow we're gonna to pick up the pigs tomorrow. That's the new plan. But what we need to do first is get a spot in the back of the truck ready to pick them up. I need a spot for six, eight week old pigs and I'm pretty sure the back of the truck will hold that no problem. I just need to make sure that there is a good safe spot for them where they can't get out in any way. And I picked up several pallets, well three pallets at a dumpster close to my house a few weeks ago with this exact purpose in mind. So let's see if we can just kind of figure something out here. Well, that was much easier than I ever imagined it would be. This pallet fits just right in this direction. And I think I'm just gonna clamp this to the top of the bed and that'll be fine. I'm gonna put a couple of really strong C-clamps right up here on uh, the front part or right next to the toolbox here. And then on the back, I think I'm just gonna put some wood clamps back there. Well, those C-clamps are doing a much better job than I thought. That's a pretty redneck setup, but I think it'll do the job. I also want to take a bunch of planer shavings so they've got some bedding for the trip. It's a 
broken glass. I don't want that back there with them. Oh, I see them. Those are little bitty things. Yeah. So which one is the mama of the ones that I'm getting? That big girl. The big one right there? Okay. And you say what, 525 right now? Yeah. Don't wait. You don't know me, do you? You don't know me. Got him. When he's done. Oh, what happened? <laughs> that scared They'll me. They'll startle you, won't they? <laughs> that scare you? Yeah. You can about reach out there and put your hand on them when it's blistering hot don't nobody want to do nothing you come over and sit on that dam over there in the shade mm -hmm. so, oh throw the rest of the bucket in there it ain't hurt nothing bass i got him in his neck fish uh, <laughs> Well guys, my contraption here worked really, really well. We made that trip without incident at all. And at this point, I've, I need to get one of those shelters out here into the new pig pen. I failed to do that. So what I'm gonna do is give them some water and let them hang out for a little while in this. It's shady now, it's not so hot out here, but I'm gonna give them some water just to tide them over for a while and uh, we'll go get their shelter. Weren't supposed to get out. What are you doing? She just stepped right over the wire. You got to get back in. Nope, nope, nope. Uh -uh, you can't go over here. No, you got to get back. Go back. Go back. You got to go back. You got to go back. Got to go back. You got to go back. Nope. This way. This way. This way. Now step over it. Step over it. Oh no! Now they're all out. We'll get them back in, babe. So usually my approach to getting that shelter out is just kind of opening one of these sections here, driving the tractor in and pulling it out, but uh, we're going to do another approach since the pigs now can just walk right over that electric wire in there. This is where my hat fell off when I was chasing pigs in the yard, buddy. So during the middle of moving that shelter, my camera started acting up and I thought that I was gonna lose all of my footage. So I had to go inside and upload it to my computer. Now we can finish up moving this shelter. Thankfully, it's not hot. So the pigs are fine and they've got water. And uh, let's get this finished up. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm really not totally sure how to go about this. I thought maybe about pulling them up from the top, but I think I'm gonna attempt just to lower the tailgate, bring them straight out of the back. I feel like that increases my chance for an escape. It seems like the most efficient way to do it. We'll see. We're gonna try it this way instead. That's rooster. Don't we think then they're dead? That's three, buddy. Well, guys, I got five of them in, and then number six just sailed right over the edge of the truck bed so we got another one to get back in i think y'all can probably see this there's five pigs inside of the fence right here and there's one between the chicken fence and the pig pit fence i'm gonna try to block this off and just kind of corral him right in here or her whatever it is he got himself in yeah, he's in the fence now, buddy. I went over there to run her back in and she pretty well panicked and walked into the fence, which made the fence kind of lay part of the way down and she found one of the holes in the netting that was big enough. She just went right through, which is, which is fine with me. She's back in or she's where she's supposed to be. I'm gonna take this and improve the electric fence wire on that side and I hope they'll be okay. They have found their food, which is really good. I mean, that was quick. They found it awfully fast. They must've been hungry. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. I'm really rapidly running out of daylight here. So there, the new pigs are settling in. They've been eating and I think they'll be okay. I just went around, put a few more stakes or a couple more stakes around to kind of get the fence evened out. And um, I haven't heard any of them get shocked yet. They're not trained to electric. So it's gonna happen pretty soon, but they'll, they'll figure it out. Um, on the escape earlier with the other pigs, so I wish that I had, could have recorded that entire thing and not just the getting those last two back in. That spotted one that I call Oreo, uh, I managed to get him back in. He was actually kind of the easiest one to get back in, which is odd because he's much larger. But the other two were really not wanting to go back in at all. They kind of wandered up toward the house and I ran into the house and got a bag of corn chips and uh, went out and I tried to start feeding them corn chips and one of them was sort of interested. The other one was really not interested at all. I couldn't get her to try it. And then I walked back in or ran back in. There was a lot of running involved and got a bottle of pancake syrup. And I said, well, maybe I can just give the pig some pancake syrup and it'll follow me everywhere. Well, that didn't really work either. She just kind of licked it off the ground and then I couldn't get her to follow me that way either. So I put all that junk down and then I just started walking back out to the pen and they followed me. And I was able to get them closer to the pen like that, managed to push one on in. Um, I think the problem was they stepped over that electric wire to get out, but then they were wary of getting back onto that wire going back in because they're trained to that single wire. We're supposed to be trained to the single wire at least. After that, I went and I got a rope and hung it around the neck of the other one. And I looked on the internet and I discovered that you're actually supposed to put it around their chest and that makes a whole lot more sense. But either way, all the pigs are back in. I'm about to go put another electric wire on that fence so that they'll be less apt to step over like that. And if that was quite an experience, um, I hope to never have it again. I, I watched So the Land, Jason, and he says, I don't trust no pig and I see where he's coming from. I, I, had, I had trusted these pigs to not get out on that single wire and that was not so smart of me. They decided they wanted to get out and they did. So good learning experience. I'm about to go uh, shore up the fence, make it a little more secure. Oh, and the, the electric is working. I saw one of them stick their nose to it and she squealed after it, after it popped her. So it's working. Um, it's just when you, they, they can get over it now. So I need to put more wire out there. So anyway, <clears throat> that's going to do it. I'm running out of daylight. So I want to go ahead and do that while I got some light. 
thank you for watching this video. Um, oh, I guess I should tell you the plans on these pigs. I got new pigs and I haven't told you the plans yet. So these are our new pigs. Five of these pigs are for food. Uh, one of them for us, the other four for friends and family. And there's a sixth one, a spotted one. And he is gonna be for a breeder. We, our other pigs out there, we're keeping one of those gilts and uh, we're going to see if we can start producing our own feeder piglets for ourselves and for sale. So that's what the other boy is for um, these are a according to the gentleman that I bought them from these are a mix of Yorkshire and Duroc the father is half Duroc half Yorkshire and the mother is probably about a hundred percent Yorkshire or close to that I, I can't imagine these are she's a hundred percent but she's she's real close she was a good-looking Yorkshire pig um, but yeah great-looking pig so I'm if, if I'm not a geneticist so I'm thinking 75% Yorkshire on these pigs I don't really know 25% Duroc I think they're a pretty good mix. I'm trying to keep with the Yorkshire breed because these pigs that we've got, these existing pigs, are Yorkshire with a little bit of Berkshire in them, and they have been phenomenal in growth, uh, genetics, uh, health. They have just been going gangbusters on all of that stuff. Efficiency, they're converting feed to meat super, super fast, and I really like, really like how they're acting. So, Anyway, that's our plans with these pigs, and they, they look really good. I'm not a pig expert, but I think these are some nice-looking pigs. Um, let me know what you think about them. I will see you all on the next one. I got to go make sure my pig pen is in better shape, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.